Here we present a left transylvian transinsular approach. Patient is a 29 year old male that presented with two scissors and had a history of previous radiation. On the MRI, we can see the location of the medial temporal audition, left sided, involving the uncus, the amygdala, the hippocampus, here in the FLIR sequence. And we discuss the approaches, including selective approach for amygdala hepicompectomy versus an anterior medial temporal lobectomy. The benefit of a selective approach is the preservation of left uh, temporal lobe cortex at the expense of perhaps increased risk of vascular injury and vasospasm. The medial temporal lobe can be classified in anterior, medial, and posterior portions. Here we can see the intraventricular structures where the amygdala and the hippocampal head are located. Looking at the uncus anatomy, we can identify the amygdala and above the amygdala, the important anterior perforated substance. Looking again at the choroidal fissure and the fimbria, all of these are key anatomical features. The vascular anatomy is also important to be reviewed. We have the anterior choroidal artery, the PCA, and the basal vein draining. We reviewed this anatomy previously in this publication where we reviewed the vascularization of the uncus and the basal vein variations. It's also important to remember the fiber tract anatomy, location of the temporal stem, inferior longitudinal fasciculus, optic radiations, and in red, we can see the incision for the transinsular approach. We reviewed also this white matter anatomy before. Here we simulate the approach, it's a transylvian approach. Sylvian fissure has been opened, we identify the inferior insular sulcus, we have to mobilize the temporal branches and access into the temporal horn of the ventricle, and then extend this anteriorly to perform the lateral disconnection of the middle temporal lobe, then the medial disconnection to the choroidal fissure to finally get the medial temporal lobe anterior portion completely removed. Here we have done a terrenal craniotomy. We start opening the sylvian fissure. The patient is positioned as a conventional terrenal craniotomy. The sylvian fissure is gently open. We start finding the M2 branches which we follow and we separate from each other. Here we start seeing the inferior insular sulcus. There is usually a vein running in the inferior insular sulcus. And now we're starting to see these early temporal branches that come from the inferior trunk of the MCA. These uh, temporal branches need to be mobilized so I can access the upper surface of the uncus and the planum polari. You can see the uh, insular vein and I start coagulating the veins on the surface of the planum polare to access the tumor from its upper surface. These are the first pieces that we take for biopsy. And you can see here nicely the location of the anterior aspect of the uncus. I have to continue dissecting these uh, MCA branches. I want to identify the lenticular street arteries which go to the anterior perforated substance. This is a key landmark of the approach because it's the superior limit of the resection. Now I can coagulate the anterior aspect of the uncus. And I keep mobilizing these early temporal branches that come from the inferior trunk of the NCA. Now I can identify the oculomotor nerve and I dissect the arachnoid the uncus and I can now coagulate all the surface of the uncus. I now continue my access to the inferior insular sulcus and I'm working in between the uh, MCA branches and now with the ultrasonic aspirator I can start working my way through the white matter to get into the tumor I can work on each side of these MCA branches. I can work anterior towards the uncus. I start now identifying the tumor surface. 
start getting a lateral plane of dissection where I can see the white matter work my way anteriorly until I find the pia superiorly of the sylvian fissure coagulating the tumor and getting some of the pieces of the tumor for pathology now I open the anterior aspect of the uncus and I debulk it I can see the full motor nerve and I can work from outside the uncus and from inside the uncus and I'm just going to leave the peel surface to protect the MCA branches and the lenticular steroid arteries that run medially I just open into the ventricle that's the temporal horn I'm trying to find the uncal recess anteriorly and the choroidal fissure posteriorly that way I can do my posterior disconnection of the hippocampal head and now I can work laterally to do the lateral disconnection at the level of the collateral eminence medially I can find the arachnoid with tributaries of the basal vein of Rosenthal and I'm now, now doing my middle disconnection I see the inferior ventricular vein draining into the basal vein and I can see part of the fimbria and I open the choroidal fissure and I finally disconnect the fimbria from the body of the hippocampus to the head of the hippocampus and I, remo I remove the last pieces of the hippocampal head in a superior fashion leaving that P arachnid plane to protect the choroidal artery, the PCA and all the cisternal structures and this at the end of the resection repositioning the early temporal branches and now our post-op MRI with a complete resection of the tumor the patient underwent chemo radiation therapy this was diagnosed as a wild type uh, glioblastoma multiforme patient had no post-operative deficits and no further seizures